Yeah, I suppose it's interesting to see how like the Bitcoin communities in each country differ. Um, because I can imagine like uh, with Greece, the as you said, there's, there's a lot of people who are, are in it from the beginning. But then obviously, I was thinking exactly that. I remember I remember when I was younger, um, watching the news and stuff back in like 09, 2010, and like seeing all the uh, the issues with like the essentially the collapse of <laughs> of things uh, when it comes to the money side of things. So I can imagine people were would be slightly more uh, open to and optimistic about Bitcoin, um, just because you're allowed to kind of get your control back of your uh, of your funds. Um, I suppose. Um, well, I guess not to switch the conversation too much, but um, one thing I was interested about as well, because uh, I've been, you hear a lot recently about like the metaverse um, and uh, obviously you've got like Facebook changing their name to meta, which I don't think is necessarily um, all that connected to the metaverse, although I think that's what they're trying to to do. Um, what, what I guess, because obviously you're, you're doing stories and art, and as you said, you're someone who's like uh, on the brink of innovation a lot of the time, and you're an early doctor and willing to kind of try new things and innovate. So what, what are your thoughts, I guess, on the, the metaverse as like a, as a thing, as a concept? And I, cause I, cause I can imagine you're somebody who's probably seeing it and thinking, Hey, you know, I, I can do something new here or like try, you know, try something with this. Like, what do you, what do you think on it? I suppose, like, what's your opinions and uh, are there any sort of uh, ideas flowing in your head that you don't mind sharing? Of course, I, have, I do have a, <laughs> a strong opinion in it. Uh, to, to start with, I think it will happen. I think it will happen because um these big companies like facebook and google and all that they're gonna try and make it happen uh, so it will happen and people will love it and people will get uh, you know uh, hooked on to this digital experience just like we are now with uh, likes and the instagram and all that it will become even worse than that um the main uh, the main issue with uh, the metaverse and the um, and this whole uh, you know digital living and all that, the main issue is that these will become walled gardens. That's the problem. So you know what the walled walled garden is? It's that expression. We're talking about Facebook's metaverse. We're talking about Google's metaverse. Um, so that's a problem because when you have everyone on on a wall inside a walled garden. You can control their information even even worse, even in, in a huge degree. Uh, you can control which uh, currency they're going to use, cryptocurrency for today, uh, for today's um, you know innovations. Uh, we know that uh, Facebook tried to do Libra, now they're doing something else. They're they're going to use cryptocurrency. It's not going to be Bitcoin. I'm I'm sure of it. It's not going to be Bitcoin, which they should use. Uh, so they're gonna they're gonna create. Uh, a digital experience that people would need to use and then you will have to use their own l rules their own currency cryptocurrency the ones that uh, facebook and, and the big companies will support uh, if it's uh, central bank uh, digital currency is even worse CB cbdc's and um, the problem is that um, as we've seen with uh, with our digital experience and our online experience, uh, it starts to um, to erode, uh, you know, personal connection and all that. We talk to people all the time, but we feel empty. We feel alone. We feel lonely. There are people who are depressed, and th these same people might be talking to like thirty people online all day. Uh, the best uh, the best advice to to connect it with the earlier uh, discussion we've had. The, the earlier topic. The best advice we've had on Bitcoin Twitter is to meet uh, Bitcoiners and uh, you know the community on, offline to do a meetup because um, you know you have a common interest and it's good when you use that online uh, community to actually meet in the real world and maybe create uh, some meaningful connections and some friendships. And even partnerships and even you know business uh, deals why not everything is a part of life um the problem is that uh, i think it will happen i think it will be uh the metaverse is not only vr it's also ar ar is augmented reality augmented reality is the overlay on top of the real world and uh, from the ar that we have right now um it's very intuitive it's very it's very easy to get used to. 
So people are gonna get used to using AR. AR, basically, every the entire world got a got a taste of AR with Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go had a, was it just a game where you chase, you know, uh, Pokemon on, on in the real world. Um, this was a, a huge taste of augmented reality. Uh, these things actually work. They're ve they're very good. They're very popular. Uh, people love them. Kids love them. Even grown-ups love them. And uh, it's going to blend the online experience with the real-world experience. You're going to see things through your phone. The first stage is, is uh, through the phone, just like Pokemon Go. The next stage is with the virtual glasses, uh, with uh, Google Lens and uh, a few, uh, Facebook tries to make uh, digital glasses and a few other things. And uh, the next step, which is sci-fi, but it's not that far off, is with uh, implants in uh, the eyes, or at least uh, with um, cyber lenses, you know, for the uh, to have a to have an overlay. Uh, and why why do these companies want this thing? Because just like Amazon of today, if you're not on Amazon, you're you basically are non-existent. If you're a merchant and you're not selling on Amazon, if they block you, if they, if at some point, if 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 for some reason. You can't sell on Amazon if they block you or if you don't have access to it from your country or something like that. It's like you don't exist in, the, in today's uh, marketplace. Um, that's, that's the main selling point from, of the metaverse to, to the corporations. They're, they're, they're telling each other uh, to their uh, shareholders that we're going to create a world garden uh, people will become addicted to it. They're going to love it. They're going to spend endless hours each day in it. And uh, only, only the companies that we want will show up there. Only the products that we want to promote will show up there. There will be no conflicting products, no conflicting opinions. Everything, you know, it's going to be very mainstream and, uh, you know, uh, a very bland experience just like we have now with pretty much every consumer uh, mainstream product. George, I know that we encountered each other on, on Massive, on, on the Fediverse. Do you yeah. see like a free and open source alternative to the metaverse um, arising from, from either the Fediverse or just like a, a whole new project where it's like an open source metaverse? Well, uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not an expert on that. I just, you know, use it and double on it. I basically don't have to use free and open source products. I choose to because I understand how how these can be controlled. My my node is the is using open source software. It's Raspberry Blitz, for example. Um, and I I try to use some products. I basically just do my own business. You know, I'm gonna use YouTube. I'm gonna use Facebook. I'm gonna use Twitter. I'm not I'm not contrarian just just for the sake of being contrarian. But um, I do think that we need it because we've seen uh, an increase in censorship in, in Twitter. We've seen an increase in censorship in, uh, in YouTube. Uh, we've seen the Bitcoin magazine um, the YouTube channel get banned, for example, uh, which is an, an actual magazine. Why, why, why would they ban it? There's no reason to. I don't know why they did it. That, that's what I'm saying. That um, Yes, I, I understand that we need it. Now, I don't know if the solution is Mastodon. I don't know all, all the other uh, things that pop up, you know, the other options. Um, the problem is with these things, with these social networks, is that they need the network effect. And we understand that the network effect is very easy. It's very hard to break. It's, very, it's hard to, to achieve the critical mass. And it, then it's very hard to break. Everyone's on Facebook, everyone's on Twitter, everyone's on YouTube. If you if you start something else, even if it's better, uh, you need millions of users just to get uh, some something going. It's, uh, it's it's hard to get that network effect where you find other people there. And uh, we were telling with uh, Ricardo earlier when we were chatting that uh, the the Bitcoin hackers Mastodon server is quite big. So. We have some stuff to, to talk about. There, there are plenty of people there, but that's unusual. Usually it's like a ghost town. Most servers, most uh, false projects are a ghost town. Um, so yeah, I think it's hard to get that mainstream traction. 
on the other hand, you can do sp um, specialized stuff. You, we can have, uh, you, you, you know, we, we can have uh, Bitcoin-based uh, uh, YouTube and uh, Twitter and all that. I don't know, and and it will spill off to other areas. Uh, we can uh, we can do specialized stuff. There's no need to have this mainstream thing that is Twitter and Facebook and uh, YouTube. With within the past, with like different innovations, uh, big companies haven't got involved quick enough, right? Like Bitcoin managed to go for arguably a decade maybe before big 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 companies got too involved i mean obviously they always had some interest but um and then like the internet as well like okay yeah, there were large companies involved at the outset but it wasn't quite like it is now where essentially everything is run on amazon web services <laughs> and uh like everything's extremely centralized as of the last uh, again decade maybe and maybe even less than that um so yeah. i was kind of hopeful that with the metaverse uh you know it would kind of fly under the radar a little bit and then kind of get picked up and, and by that point it's kind of too late kind of thing you know like the, the linux has already been created you know uh, the open source version of the metaverse has already been created and people are used to using it and then facebook's come too late to the party sadly uh it feels like that's not going to happen um and, and things like uh i think signs of that you can see because apple's famous aren't they for their walled garden approach to everything really like once you have a yeah. mac you have your iphone blah, blah blah and they're going to do ar as well and and with with oculus uh you know you you had to have a facebook account and they had you had to link it or else essentially your quest 2 was just a paperweight um and i know that because i had to keep my facebook account just for that purpose just to play oculus quest um and so you see a lot of that kind of practices occurring um so I, I find that quite, quite frustrating, I suppose. Um, I, th I think something that, uh, that you touched on like a, a little bit, I guess, is like how we can do it better um, and how things can be done properly and, and kind of for, 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 to benefit people more than just large companies. Um, when it comes to things like NFTs or not NFTs, but maybe like the crossover of like stories and art and the things that you're doing and then the crypto world. Um, at the moment, it feels like all we do have really is NFTs, like because everyone's so pumped about NFTs and, and and there's loads of money in it. That's kind of feels like where all of the artists are putting their attention for fair enough, correct reasons, right? Like artists have been underpaid for millennia, essentially, and like have had no fame until they die kind of things in the past, you know, so it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> um, but like, are, do you, do you, are, you there, are there any ways that you've kind of thought of or, or, or kind of things that you've come across, I guess, where where there are, there are better ways for art and crypto to cross over or better ways for artists to monetize what they're doing. Uh, I don't know, like I was thinking, because obviously you're, you're quite a sort of um, a guy who experiments quite a lot of new things. So I was wondering if you've come across anything that you think, hey, you know, five years time, this instead of NFTs, or it could be a better version of NFTs, or is there anything you can think of like in the future that kind of would be better for artists, like a, a better NFT or an opposite or an alternative to NFTs for, for ways of monetizing things? Yeah, uh, well, I don't know if you can predict something new uh, right off the bat, but uh, I think NFTs will actually be become helpful uh, because, uh, uh, as I said, you can use them as digital patronage. It's it's something if if you if you're not um, into this market just to resell it and make millions or and all that. Uh, you buy something which is a collector's edition and you buy it to support the artist that you like so um many people tend to do that we have patreon for example and it's many iterations already we have people wanting to support their favorite uh, podcast we have people wanting to support creators and artists and you know musicians and all that um let, let me interject something here uh, artists are terrible at business. They're terrible. They're absolutely terrible. Okay. That's why I say I don't consider myself too much of an artist because I'm too practical, too, too commercial, and too business oriented. It, it's funny. I do do art, I know. But uh, when I talk to other artists, they're terrible at business. Uh, they don't know how to, how to sell their stuff. They're, they don't understand that they, they that they own intellectual property in the in the things that they are building, either music, video, or or uh, images, or uh, or uh, fiction. Um, and uh, I'm not saying that I'm doing it perfectly, but I try to to understand it and I try to bring it to a different level. 
Now, the, the thing with NFTs is if, if you keep it uh, for the community, if, if my, my fans, my fans, I'm surprised, but, but I have a few fans. That's, uh, that's very shocking to me. I do have a few fans and they have bought uh, my NFTs because they're not very expensive and they just wanted something that has a digital signature of mine. I made it, so it has my own digital digital signature. It says George Saulidis on the blockchain, uh, specifically, for example, on the on the Liquid, uh, on the Rare Toshi. And people do want to support me, so uh, they they help me. They have something of mine that is collectible, um, and I can keep on making things. That's the main thing. Now, uh, we were talking about what's the, what's the big thing. The big thing, I think, is lightning. Lightning opens up a huge um, gamut of possibilities. It's going to be the bedrock of the Internet of Money. We, we still haven't uh, realized how big lightning is going to be. Lightning is, is very um, easy to use. It's... We, there are bugs with it. There are problems. There are, uh, you know, uh, um, UI issues and like, so and, and users don't quite understand. Do, do they say? Do they say is is Lightning another cryptocurrency? It's not Bitcoin. They say it's Lightning. No, it's Bitcoin, but it's uh, it's denominated in Sats just for ease of use, and it's still using Bitcoin. It's a layer two. It's something uh, on top of it, and it's faster and it's, uh, easier to use. Um, I've so I seen uh, a recent metric. I think yesterday that five thousand podcasts are using uh, Lightning uh, payments and uh, donations. Uh, that's a huge thing. That's a huge thing. So I think artists will shift to to this um, um, to this technique of uh, of community supported projects. Uh, we will have st stuff like Patreon. We will have streaming sats. If, we, if someone creates a video stream, they can have it streaming like 10 sats every, every minute or something like that. It, there's, a, there's a scroll bar and you can change it, for example. There are many iterations of it already. And uh, people are going to use uh, lots of implementations uh, through Lightning to, to support each other. Um, for example, imagine a Netflix that is uh, that works on lightning you don't pay um you don't pay a fixed fee for everyone you you watch a movie you watch a movie and uh it it charges your account with like five dollars i don't know what the what the rent amount is gonna be five dollars in sats and those sats are gonna be distributed distributed programmatically to the intellectual property owner, to the director, to the actor, to the music composer. Uh, think of how much this can create, this, how, how much this can make a, a creator economy that was going to blow up. You're going to say to someone, okay, I'm going to make a movie because I've done some filmmaking. I've, I'm going to, oh, sorry. I'm going to make a movie and uh, I, need, uh, I need music for my movie. Okay. So you're, the, you're a composer. All you need to do to get paid is give me your lightning address. And I'm going to plug it in to the, basically it's a script, okay, it's a program. Uh, I'm going to add it to, the, to that Netflix. And uh, every time we get paid, you get 2% of the amount that we get paid. You get paid in SATs directly to your lightning account that you've given me. And it's all by a program, and it's all by uh, uh, by computer. It's all fair. It's all done, uh, you know, automatically. Um, and once once these things start to happen, then we will see some artists, which I've said, artists don't understand the business decisions and all that. Um, we will, if it becomes easier for them, we will see much uh, fair. Uh, system of uh, you know uh, artistic uh, you know compensation and uh, payment and all that it will become straight from the consumer through a platform 
uh, to the creators. And that uh, the thing with the movie was an example of a collaborative thing. It can be a pure, pure creative.